Uh, hello friends, uh, today we are going to see how to use the concept of a hyperbola for actually locating lost ships. Uh, this is called as the Lorancy system. The Lorancy system uses a concept of a hyperbola. Uh, we need to find the equation of a hyperbola. In this lecture, you are going to see how to write the equation of a hyperbola and actually solve two equations to find the precise location of the point. Uh, this uh, lecture is on the Lorand C system using the concept of hyperbola. Lorand system. Now what is the Lorand system? In the Lorand system we are going to use the concept of the hyperbola. Now, Lorand stands for uh, Long Range Navigation. Uh, the Federation government runs a Lorand system which uses land-based radio navigation transmitters to provide users with information on position and timing. Now, this was invented by a person called uh, Alfred Loomis somewhere during the World War II. Uh, they used to use this system to locate ships using plane carried radars. Uh, so they use the concept of hyperbola. Now, to, uh, nowadays they use the Loran C system, which is supplemented by the GPS. So you can check this on uh, Google Loran C supplemented with uh, the GPS system. I am going to uh, tell you exactly how it works. The GPS system actually consists of around 24 satellites uh, that orbit at about uh, 11,000 11, miles above the Earth. Now, so we can you can imagine the GPS system around 24 satellites orbiting 11,000 miles above the Earth, continuously giving information. Uh, this is actually created by the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, to provide the navigation information for targeting weapons but the GPS is also available for the civilian users uh, in a, something like a degraded mode. Uh, anyway, without much this, let me tell you how to apply this system. Uh, for using the system, you need to first understand how to write the equation of a hyperbola. It's a very, very simple what is a hyperbola? A hyperbola is a set of points such that the difference between difference of whose distances between two fixed points is a constant. Now I wanted to look at this diagram shown here. In this P is a point so PF1 minus PF2 that's always a constant and that is equal to the major axis or the transverse axis which is this distance. So if you PF1, PF2, now the coordinates of F1 and F2 are known to us. They are the foci that is AE0 and minus AE0 and the equation of a hyperbola is X square by A square minus Y square by B square is equal to 1 x square by a square minus y square by b square equals 1. Now, let us take uh, one more equation you need to know which you have studied is b square is a square into e square minus 1. e is the eccentricity of the hyperbola which is greater than 1. Now, using this information, we are ready to see how the Lorand system actually works. But first, let us see how to write the equation of a hyperbola. So, let us consider this example. So imagine you have the two foci at say 5, 0, say this is at uh, 5, 0 and this is at uh, minus 5, 0 and we want to find the equation of the point P. Uh, assume that PF1 minus PF2 is equal to 8, say the difference PF1 minus PF2 is equal to how much? 8. So, if that is equal to 8, that means 2a is equal to 8 because pf1 minus pf2 is equal to 2a. 
So 2a is equal to 8a is equal to 4. Then you use the equation b square is equal to a square into e square minus 1. So now you know both a square and b square. That is how we write the equation of a hyperbola. So in other words, we need to know that if the coordinates of the foci is known and if pf1 minus pf2 is known, we can clearly write the equation of the hyperbola. Now let me explain to you how this is used in navigation. Uh, now suppose we have two stations A and B which are miles apart. Any two stations A and B miles apart and they transmit synchronized radio signals. Say this is A, this is B and they are transmitting synchronized radio signals. The Loran receiver in your ship measures the difference in reception times. That means we are measuring PF1 minus PF2. So it measures the difference uh, the radio signals travel at a speed of uh, 186,000 miles per hour. So, per second, sorry. Uh, so, 186,000 one uh, miles per second. Now, using this information, you can determine the difference to A. Because there will be a small time lag between the uh, time between the signals reach the point. So you can find 2A. Now you already know the positions of A and B. So using this idea, you can trace the equation of the hyperbola. You can find the equation of the hyperbola. This is the idea we are going to use uh, to do this question. Uh, so with two pairs of transmitters, the position of your ship can be determined at the point of intersection of the two hyperbolas. So as you can see in this diagram, there are two hyperbolas, one is shown in black, the other is shown in red. Now let us see what the problem is about. Uh, so in this question, uh, we have a navigation system. Now we have two receiving stations. They are located at A and B. Now the two location systems are at A and B and they are at coordinates uh, minus 100, comma 0 and 100, comma 0. So imagine this is A, this is uh, 100, comma 0, this is minus 100, comma 0. These are two receiving stations which we will call as A and B. A, na a navigator P, so P is here, a navigator P on the ship somewhere in the second quadrant listens to pair A and B. So the difference of the distance is 120 miles. So, so this they know that the difference PA minus PB is 120 miles. Now we know the coordinates of A and B. Similarly, there is another pair, two more receivers located at C and D. Now C is at minus 150, 0 and 150, 0. So we have here PC minus PD that is also given as 80 miles per hour. So with this we are going to trace two different hyperbolas. Now we need to find the precise location of the point P. So that is the question. So we have these two receivers A and B and they are sending signals to P. But PA minus PB, there is a small time lag and uh, the, uh, we know that the dif dis distance is 120 miles. PA minus PB is 120 miles. PC minus PD is 80 miles. Now using this concept, we are going to find the exact location of the point P. So now, uh, from the information that is PB minus PA, is equal to 120, we know that 2a is equal to 120. Therefore, a is how much? a is 60. Now, we also know the coordinates ae is 100 because the foci is ae. So, using the information b square is equal to a square into e square minus 1, we are now going to calculate b square. So, b square is a square e square minus a square, which in this case turns out to be 100 square minus 60 square. So that means B square is equal to 6400. So from this we know that the 
equation of the hyperbola is x square by 3600 minus y square by 6400 is equal to 1. So this traces the first hyperbola. Now the second hyperbola which I am going to show in red color is going to be just like this. In this you know PC minus PD is equal to AT. AE is 150. So we know that 2A is 80, so A is 40 and we also know B square is A square E square minus A square. So that would give me 20900. 0, 0. So from this we know that the equation is Y square upon 1600 minus X square upon 20900 0, 0, 0 is equal to 1. Now we are going to solve equation 1 and equation 2. And we are going to place the point in the, the second quadrant. Now to solve equation 1 and 2, I am going to use the matrix method because these numbers are very, very complicated. So we are going to use a graphing, uh, you are going to use the scientific calculator and put all the information on the matrix. So once I put the information on the matrix, the matrix would read something like this 1 by 3600 0, 0, minus 1 by 6400. 0, 0, minus 1 by 20900 0, 0, and 1 by 1600 and that multiplied with some x square y square and right hand side is going to be exactly 1 1. Now this is a x is equal to b so x is equal to a inverse into b. Now let's find the inverse the inverse using the calculator is giving me 3762 940.5 288 and 1672 1 1 now you calculate this quantity and you will get x square and y square by multiplying matrix multiplication uh, so using matrix multiplication I am getting x square as 4702.5 and y square as 1960. Now once I get these two quantities, I need to take the square root, so I get x and y, but since p lies on the second quadrant, we are taking x as negative, so p is equal to minus 68.57 and q is 44.27. So this is the precise location of the ship. So p lies on the second quadrant, so that's how we use the Lorentz system to find the ship, uh, the lost ship very, very accurately. I had already given you this information, but just quickly going over it, how to use this idea to track ships. Lorentz stands for the long range navigation. This uses long land based radio navigation transmitters to provide users with information on position and timing. The inventor is Alfred Lee Loomis, World War II, during World War II. This system is now supplemented with GPS system. The GPS consists of 24 satellites and that orbit 11,000 miles above the Earth. The GPS was created by the U.S. Department of Defense to provide precise navigation. Uh, it is available to civilians in the degraded mode. So what we are actually using is something like a more of a degraded mode of this. So the idea we used was uh, we put two receiving stations A and B and we found the difference PA minus PB based on that we, t we found this hyperbola and then we took two more stations C and D, C and D again we found the difference between the two and we put another hyperbola like this, like this and we precisely found the coordinate of P. Uh, so, the, so this is exactly what is done. Uh, only thing the radio signals travel at a speed of 18, 186,000 miles per second. So when there is a time lag, using the time lag we find the distance PA minus PB. So the distance, the time lag multiplied with this speed gives us the distance. Uh, I found this uh, very, very interesting and that is why I thought of sharing this with you, this information. Uh, I hope you also found it interesting and the problem uh, which I have posed here. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye and good luck.